going to do some microbiology today. So the first thing we have to do when we're handling microbes is to produce a sterile area in which we can work so that we don't contaminate our work um, and so that we don't endanger ourselves. So to produce a sterile area we've got a, a solution, 1% solution of Vercon. So Vercon disinfectant which is very strong, it's commonly used in laboratories and we're going to swab that over our bench just to make it nice and wet. Um, if we're doing this with students, if the, if the school students are doing this, the pupils are doing this, uh, we can use a white tile that's been in a solution of Vercon uh, and give them that to work on. Um, but if we, if we need a larger area, white tile obviously is quite small, if we need a larger area, then we need to swap the bench. Um, and that needs a little while to, to act, because disinfectant needs time to, uh, to do its work. So within our sterile area that we're creating, we're then going to put a Bunsen burner. So by lighting a Bunsen burner, we're sterilising the air um, where we're going to work as well as the surfaces. So when our Bunsen burner is on a blue flame or a fairly hot flame, uh, what happens is we get our air currents around the Bunsen burner. So we all know that heat rises. So um, we can put our hand over the top and quite high up and we can feel the heat. So as the, as the heat rises, so air is drawn up from the base of the Bunsen burner up through the flame and then above and, above and as it cools it will begin to descend again and so we're creating uh, an air current up from the bottom through the flame uh, around and if you could see the air currents what you get is a three-dimensional movement of air around the Bunsen burner um, and consequently all of that air in a small um, um, radius around the, the Bunsen burner, all of that air passes through the flame and is consequent, consequently it's sterile. So that if we're working close to our Bunsen burner and our, and our bench is all swabbed, we're working in a sterile area. So students can, can, can prepare their own little sterile area on the bench uh, for themselves to work in. So what we're going to do today is we're going to set up an experiment to grow a Fusarium solani uh, culture. This is a culture, this has been um, a, obtained as a slope from Blade Biological um, in Kent um, and, we're, and it's very closely related to the organism that's used to produce corn uh, and a corn is a mycoprotein, so means, meaning it's derived from a fungus. So you can see on the slope here uh, that we've got nice white fungal growth and we need to use that to inoculate into our liquid culture. So this is an agar culture and this is a broth culture um, and this is a malt extract broth that we're going to be using today. So as I said these, this culture can be brought in from Blaze Biological um, and then we would expect the technician to subculture this uh, in the prep room uh, so that every student is able to have uh, have their own culture uh, to work with as, as, as their inoculum. A note from Cleeps here. Uh, they recommended to us that it's bad practice for students to ever open a Petri dish uh, with any sort of culture growing in it. Therefore, it would be better to provide each student with a slope culture um, in a little bottle um, there's no difference, it really just is to discourage students from ever opening uh, a Petri dish with a culture growing in it. So, if we loosen the, the cap slightly, and we're going to get our culture nice and close to the Bunsen burner, so it's within our sterile area. Okay. So, it's important when we're doing microbiology that we start off with any of the materials that we're using, uh, that they are sterile before we start. Um, so here we've got some malt extract media that we've prepared. Um, so uh, well, we've got some tape on here which shows that it's been that it's been autoclaved, that it is sterile. Uh, we've got a foam bung in here. You can use um, cotton wool if you need to. 
and then foil on the top. And you can prepare that and it will stay sterile uh, for, for a good few months um, before you need to, if, you, if you need to keep it before you use it. And, and the most challenging thing really uh, are the bacteria that come off our cells. So anything that I'm breathing out, any air that I'm breathing out, may well contain uh, bacteria from, from my, my mouth, my nasal passages. Um, so we need a sterile implement. We've got a spatula here, and we've got two different ways of sterilizing the spatula. Now, uh, this is something, if you're doing it as a demonstration, you can show the students um, because it's quite harmless, but you may decide that it's something that you don't want to do with your students. We've got industrial methylated spirits here, so alcohol. Uh, you see I've got a highly flammable sticker on there, so we don't want to bring that too close to the Bunsen burner. But if we put our spatula in, we can put that in the flame and the alcohol that's on there will burn off, rendering these, that end of the spatula sterile. We can then use that to, um, to take a sample out, out of our slope to put into our broth culture. Now if you don't feel confident with that or if you want your students to do it, there's an alternative way uh, of, of sterilising our spatula. Uh, and I should say that when I do this, just in case I am silly enough to, to flame my spatula and then put it back in the alcohol while it's still alight so that the whole thing catches fire, I always have a Petri dish handy because you can stop that flame very quickly by putting a Petri dish on the top. Uh, and because of the lack of oxygen, the flame will very quickly go out. So, it's, yeah, so it will be rendered harmless very quickly. But if you want to sterilise uh, spatulas independently uh, without using alcohol, you can sterilise them in the pressure cooker over here when you sterilise your medium. So inside here we've got a, a, a spatula that's been sterilised using the autoclave. So now we're ready to inoculate our culture. So I'm just going to loosen the lid at the top there so that I'm all ready to go. And you notice that I'm still working within my sterile area here next to the Bunsen burner. So this spatula is sterile and what I'm going to do is I'm not going to touch the, the end that I'm going to put into the culture. Um, and then using my good aseptic technique um, I'm going to take the cap off with my little finger and then I'm going to put the spatula in and take a little sample of agar plus the fungus um, and what I want to do really is to, to chop that up a bit because when I inoculate it, I don't just want one big chunk of agar, I want lots of little bits which are going to disperse in the medium and they'll all grow independently. Okay, so that's prepared. Put that down there within my sterile area. Put the lid back on there for a tiny second. This is where I run out of hands. So I can put that down on the bench if I need to, but bearing in mind that things may drop into the cap when I'm doing it. Uh, and then to inoculate my culture, I'm just going to take that bit of agar and put it in. So you can say to students to try and take uh, a one centimetre square portion of their fungus. So because I've touched the neck of this conical flask, I'm going to flame it before I put the bung back in. So hopefully it's sterile at the top there. I've finished with my spatula now. Uh, that can, well, unless I'm going to inoculate more than one flask, I'm just going to pop that back in the alcohol because that's now contaminated with fungus and needs to be sterilised again. Put the lid back on my fusarium. Gently flame the, the top. <coughs> Sorry. Gently flame the top of the of the bottle. Put the cap back on, and we've got our our fusarium in here. Now, fungi are generally strictly aerobic, so they need lots and lots of air in order to grow. So, if you have got a shaker or a stirrer that you can put your culture on, so much the better because that will incorporate air as they grow. They ideally like to be incubated at about 25 or 30 degrees, but again, if you've, if you've not got an incubator, 
you can put this on the bench and they will go they will grow very well uh, but they just take a little bit longer um, what we've been doing if we've not got a shaker to use um, or a water bath or or a stirrer then we have been uh, using um, just ourselves and, and each day we come two or three times a day and give the flask a good shake so incorporating um, air making sure we don't make the, the bung the foam bung at the top here wet but, but incorporating air to help the fungus grow um, so so we don't exclude air we're going to put this foil cap on but ever so loosely put it back on very very loosely so that the air can travel underneath um, and then we're going to leave that for probably about a week which after which time we'll be able to see um, a, a complete layer of fungus across the top of the agar. <laughs> this is this is a, a culture that we that we started growing about a week ago, um, and, and this one we've added two percent additional glucose to because we've been looking at the effect of glucose concentration on the amount of um, biological material that's that's produced. Uh, and one of the factors that we've discovered, because we're we're saying that they need to be aerated, they need lots of oxygen. We've done it in bigger flasks um, so that we've got a bigger surface area to volume ratio. Um, but this one, it, so we've been shaking it every day and you can see in there that there's quite a big chunk of fungus. Um, what we would recommend, uh, strongly recommend, is that at this stage, if the students are doing the experiment, that they don't open their cultures because there is a chance that when they've been doing their manipulation that they may have contaminated this and we've got something else in there besides fusarium, uh, possibly something that's uh, you know, pathogenic that's, that's harmful to them. Um, so at this stage, what we've been doing is putting the, the whole culture into an oven. So before we started our experiment, in each case, we weigh the flask with the uh, liquid culture in there and then when we've dried the whole thing down so that all that we have remaining uh, is, is the biomass, the, the, the fungus that's grown, uh, we can then weigh them again uh, and then we get measurements of, of the amount of biomass produced uh, as a, in, in relation to the concentration of glucose. And we found quite a nice correlation with that. In, in fact, it's, it, well, we'll put some graphs up on our website. Um, they are quite linear, which is, which is nice uh, for students to do an investigation. But it is, it is microbiology. As soon as we've got a nutrient medium uh, and we start opening the top, uh, this, you know, this, it's no longer sterile once we've taken the bung out. It's no longer sterile. Um, you know, if we're not very experienced, there is a chance that, um, that, that we can contaminate the culture uh, and therefore students that should, under no circumstances, open the cultures at this stage. But you can still complete the experiment by drying the, the liquid uh, and measuring the, bio, the biomass.